Hello and welcome to Health 2020. I'm Dr. Salom Mutau. Now, by the end of this show, approximately five people will have suffered a stroke in South Africa. Sadly, at least one of them will die of the stroke. Now, some of the ones surviving stroke may recover fully, but some will be left with lasting disabilities which may negatively impact their ability to live a normal life. Now, stroke can be devastating not only to the sufferers, but to their loved ones as well. The good news, though, is that most strokes can be prevented by simply living a healthy lifestyle and ensuring that under underlying chronic illnesses such as diabetes and high blood pressure are well controlled. So today we have a specialist neurologist and head of neurology at Wits University who will unpack everything we need to know about stroke. Now a few years ago, Kele Mutswani suffered a stroke but fortunately lived to tell her tale. Let's take a look. The day I had a stroke was on the 7th of October. 2012, it happened, I was, in a, I was in the hospital, I had been admitted for headache, I had a severe headache for weeks. Well, because of, I had received an email telling about the signs of strokes, I knew when it happened that, I knew two weeks before that these are sign, the signs of a stroke, of an impending stroke. That's why I even went to see a neurologist and when you know I wasn't getting better the headache was severe to the point where I had to be, to drug myself all the time but even that didn't help. I had a hemorrhagic stroke which was which is a bleed in the brain. It was on the right hemisphere of the brain. So it it, it that meant it 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 what it did was it paralyzed the left side, the whole left side was paralyzed. I had pre-existing condition, which is high blood pressure. At the time I thought that my life was going to be, you know, it was going to go back to normal. I didn't know what was what awaited me uh, post-discharge. It was when I was there, when the nurses had to help me to walk to the, to the nurses station. I, then I realized that this is much bigger than I had thought. Having to be told that move one leg first and then the next, I realized then that, you know, we take so much for granted. Here I am, a 42-year-old woman, being taught how to walk, but now with my hand not functioning, I can't do that. I can't do the things that I like doing, you know, like cooking, baking, my garden, doing my own garden. Or even cleaning the pool, I can't do that anymore. I have to be assisted with everything. At, at the Stroke Survivors Foundation, we are a community of stroke survivors who have come together to, to talk about what is it that we, a, a stroke survivor needs after having a stroke. So what we have, during our talks, we've, we've realized that many families or relationships Marriages end because of strokes, you know. So, because there's no support. So we, that's where we come in. We, we give support to families of stroke survivors and stroke survivors as well. Because one thing that we do, is everybody concentrates on the stroke survivor and not thinking about the family, what the family has to go through which is something that is, it is very hard on the families. One day you have this person who's, you know, like your you know, superwoman, the next thing, that person is gone. So to help us understand this issue of stroke a lot better, it's a great pleasure to welcome our special guest today, Professor Gerish Mori, who is head of neurology at Vert University. Prof. Hi. Welcome to our program and thank you so much for your time. Thank you for inviting me. Thank All you. Right. So let's start at the beginning now. I mean, we've heard Keller's story, I mean, sad mm -hmm. story, really covering the entire mm -hmm. spectrum of what we need to know about stroke. Mm -hmm. But let's start by defining exactly what this is and where it happens. Okay, so I, I think always the first thing is the definition, because yeah. that's how we know what, we, what we're doing. Right. And a stroke, by definition, is the sudden onset of what we call a focal neurological deficit. Let's explain that. Focal as in a part of your body. 
So the simplest way of saying it, it's a sudden onset of a part of your body not working. Right. So the minute you see or feel like something about you is different, right. or part of your body stops working, your face stops working, you can't see from the eye, your arm or your leg or both stop working, or you suddenly become very imbalanced, that's a focal thing. Yeah. And that is what a stroke is. Mm -hmm. And we need to understand that the stroke basically the, 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 the medical term for stroke is cerebrovascular event. Right. And all strokes are cerebro, which is the brain, and vascular is the blood flow to the brain. Mm -hmm. And strokes arise as a result of that combination. So it's blood right. flow to the brain being yeah. disturbed. Yeah. And I so suppose the next step is to explain exactly how that how, happens. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's what we call mechanisms. Yeah. In terms of how there are two ways that you can disrupt pl blood flow to the brain. Right. Reduce it, which we call ischemia, or burst it, which we call hemorrhage. Like the person said she had a hemorrhage yeah. in her brain. So the ischemia is the big group. Two thirds of all strokes are ischemic stroke, yeah. a third are hemorrhagic. Right. Right. And then if so, you take So just in simple terms, is ischemia, I mean, perhaps you want to just explain yeah. what that is. Yeah. Blood flow that becomes deficient to the brain. Right. That's what ischemia means. Right any organ that doesn't get blood to it becomes is, its ischemia. Right. Now, how do we get that? And so we go back to medical school, where we speak of what we call Virchow's triad. Right. And the only way we can reduce blood flow is if your blood vessel is abnormal, yeah. it's too thick or it's not contracting enough, it's too stiff. Yeah. If the blood flowing through the vessel is flowing badly because there are blockages in the blood vessel by fat in the blood vessel, yeah or the blood itself, its constituents, what it's made of, mm. change, and yeah. it becomes thick. The coagulability increases. In other words, its tendency to clot right. becomes higher. So right. if you have those three factors, yeah. then you're reducing blood flow to your brain, right. and that ischemia is what ends up with a stroke. Okay. Having described that, you started earlier by talking about you know, the part of the body not functioning. How is this diagnosed? How do you see that so, someone uh, 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 in, in terms of clinical diagnosis, the patient says to you, I had, like that lady said, I had a severe headache and then my left side stopped working. And that's the one thing. The other important one is sometimes people say to you, I was looking at my husband and I couldn't see half of him. Mm. Or it might be nice, but it's a bad sign there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And you lose speech. You suddenly yeah. can't find words or you just stop speaking. Right. You see, so those are the important things. Yeah. And, and then obviously the, the, the balance one where you, you fall, you start becoming clumsy and you fall. Yeah. Yeah. But the feeling can also, it can be mild in the sense that you just get a loss of sensation. Everything's working, but half your body you can't feel. Yeah. So it's always some part of your body yeah. that stops working right. Right. normally. Right. Okay. I mean, having, having spoken about this, I mean, it, you know, one, one says the important question then is, what causes, what are the risk factors? Okay, so when we look at both ischemic and hemorrhage, and hemorrhage is the one where the blood vessels burst, yeah. and then you get a big bleed in the brain. But if you take both of these and you look at the risk factors, there are mainly f there are five important ones. Yeah. Hypertension, that's the biggest, single, most important risk factor. Yeah. Two thirds of stroke are due to that. Mm. Diabetes, because of the effects on the blood vessel and the constituents. Um, and then cholesterol, yeah. if your blood is uh, too much fat. The fourth one, unfortunately for most of us, is age. Yeah. And age is a risk factor. Mm -hmm. And then we've got cigarette smoking. Yeah. And that's like a killer. I mean, if yeah. you're doing that, yeah. you, you, you're sort of destined in that direction. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And then the last one, in women, oral contraceptives yeah. have been shown to have an I increased risk. Right. 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 We'll come back and talk about how we can prevent stroke. Have you now understood yeah. some of those risk factors? Okay, time for a quick break. When we come back, we continue our discussion on stroke and answer some of your questions. Uh, please stay with us. Welcome back. So it is clear that people have different views, knowledge, beliefs and concerns about stroke. Let's take a look. Okay, I mean, I'm going to go to Magasaya is stroke, I'm going to be a plague, the so busy ambulance. I mean, I was going to go to the moon to Magasaya is stroke, so we had blood pressure, normal stress. 
Uh, so we're going to get a comment from our guest, but first we received an array of questions from you, and here's the first one. This one is from Liz, who says, what exactly causes stroke, and what's the difference between minor stroke and stroke? So, so perhaps on this one, I mean, we, we did cover two major different types of stroke. There's one that we didn't mention, TIA. Uh, perhaps you want to take yeah, a yeah. look at this? So TIA is the, is the warding stroke. Yeah. So you get that focal thing that I spoke about, the focal event, but you recover fully. Yeah. Within 24 hours, it completely reverses. There are yeah. several mechanisms for that yeah. or understanding. It's almost as if the clot blocks the artery and then disperses or the blood vessel goes into a spasm and then releases the spasm mm. and then the blood flows again. And, mm. and that tells you that you can reverse strokes, but yeah. we haven't perfected that art, right. you see, and, and maybe that's nature's way of curing strokes. Yeah. But unfortunately, what it's also telling you is that you are now a major risk yeah. for stroke. And yeah. if you don't do what, what we, we talked about, yeah. you will get a stroke. All right, talk about risk then. I mean, the second clip mentions stress. Yeah. As another big risk factor, factor. Yeah. So your comment on that? So stress, stress is a, is a big thing because you see, when you're stressed and you're under all that pressure, your steroid response, your, your hormone response is diminished. Yeah. And, and we know that stress increases your cholesterol, increases your blood pressure, mm. your pulse goes up, you don't sleep well, and all that disruption yeah. increases your risk for stroke. All right, so perhaps the most important part of our discussion today then, having understood all of these risk factors, how can we prevent How do you stroke? prevent? You've yeah. got to change your lifestyle. So first and foremost, if you've had a TIA, you're in a high-risk category, right? And so you, you must take it as, as gospel, you have to change. Right. But even if you're not, and remember I said aging is one of the risk factors, yeah. right? And I mean, if you take COVID, young people got strokes with COVID. Mm. So, you know, a healthy lifestyle, whether you're young or old, is most important. Mm. Diet, whether you're young or, or old, Control your diet. Stop eating the junk that they're throwing at us. Yeah. Smoking, it's a no-no. Mm. It's a done thing, mm. right? Mm. And then for us in our country, in particular, blood pressure. Mm. Check your blood pressure, and if it's high, control it. Don't go and find out you have hypertension when you have a stroke. Right. You know? It may be too late. It's a bit too late. Yeah. And, and we, that's half our problem. People only arrive when they've had the event. Right. And then you say, but you know, you've been, your blood pressure is so high, haven't yeah. you checked? Yeah. And that's the other thing we don't do, we don't right. check. Yeah. And then diabetes, control it, yeah. you know? And those are the important, those are the important things in yeah. terms of prevention. Right. You've got to do these things, then you're gonna prevent right. your stroke. Right. The other I issue is, I mean, the lady spoke about calling the ambulance, and if you think you're having one, yes, call the ambulance, forget about that, the vinegar. That's an important one. We're gonna forget get about the vinegar, that's right. get that ambulance. We're gonna get to that. <laughs> let's, see, let's see our next question, and this one is from Tobaga from PE. It says, which symptoms of stroke should I look for on my body? And, and you know, linking that now Same to that first clip. Same thing about, yeah. yeah. You know, how uh, weakness on one side, yeah. loss of feeling on one side, loss of vision, loss of speech, yeah. those are the things. So, Whenever your functioning changes, if any part of your body is not working, yeah. right, you're probably having a stroke. And the important thing to then do is what do you do when you see that somebody's having a stroke yeah. or you're having a stroke yourself? So the, fir the first thing you should do is take your aspirin. Yeah. And, and this is an important thing. Take the aspirin. The other important thing is fluids. And now with this heat, we see a lot of, especially older people, they get dehydrated very right. quickly. So pour in the fluids, get the ambulance, or if you're going to get into the car, get to a hospital. As quickly as possible. Yeah. All right. Fast. Let's, let's go to the next question. Uh, Matsidiso from Rustenburg. My dad suffered a stroke five years ago, and his recovery has been very slow. Should he get COVID? Will his condition worsen? Mm. Terrible question. And the unfortunate answer is yes, his yeah. condition will worsen, as we've seen globally. Right. You get COVID, you've got a comorbidity, your outcome is not good. Right, right. Okay. Next question is from uh, Patricia. Uh, my brother had a stroke. It's been seven months now. He's been in and out of hospital, but he's getting no help. He's getting worse. His left hand and leg can't move and are painful. What must we do? Please help. Now that's, uh, that's a this desperate... This is also uh, unfortunate uh, question. This, yeah. is the, this is where your, your comment, prevent, is first most important. Right. The problem is once it happens, yeah. and when you've stuck with this problem of the hemiplegia, the yeah. deficit, yeah. difficult, patience, yeah. time, 
continuance with, or persistence with physiotherapy, yeah. mobilization, yeah. those are the important things. So, so these, these require time, time and, and, and a lot of yeah, patience. It's, a, it's almost a lifelong yeah. process. Right, 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 right. Okay. All right, next question is from Sandile. Um, in 2017, I had a stroke in my left hand and leg. Since then, my left arm becomes painful every day. It feels like a stab wound in my left arm. Can you give me advice on how I can make my arm right again? I also got a problem with the runny nose ever since. Mm. Now, I haven't heard this runny nose. Well, runny nose is yeah. a bit difficult to answer, yeah. but you know, it might be something autonomic that happened as a result of the stroke. Right. Um, but in terms of the pain that's common, that's yeah. linked to the stiffness that one gets after a stroke, what we call spasticity, yeah. um, and that can be treated. There are medicines that we use to assist, yeah. but mobilization, passive stretching, walking, mm. pushing, doing all the physiotherapy and rehab things, yeah. that's the most important part. All right, okay. Let's go to the next question. Uh, Zandi is asking, I'd like to know what to do. I had a stroke and I do Botox at Barra. I don't do physiotherapy, so I'd like to know what else I can do to get healed. Yeah, so Botox is good when you've got, you see, when you've got a very stiff arm, the muscles are in contract, are in a contracture, yeah. and that's where the Botox helps. Even in the hand, it becomes stiff, and so the Botox helps relieve the spasm. So the reason it works on wrinkles is it paralyzes muscle, and so that's the same mechanism. We release the spasms, but you have to exercise. So unfortunately, she's not following the Botox with the physiotherapy, which yeah. she should really do. All right, okay. I hope the message is quite clear there, Zandi. Please continue to freeze up. Next one is Priti Shongwe, who says, my husband had a severe stroke on the 21st of August and was operated in the head for bleeding. He's unable to talk and work. I want to help him again, or at least I want to help him regain at least the talking because he's experiencing anxiety and depression. I want to help with all my heart. He's 50 years now. It's quite uh, a sad very one. Sad, I mean. Very sad, very uh, yeah. sad. And this is the, the issue, that once these things happen, so we often say, probably the worst thing to happen to you is to have a stroke. Mm -hmm. I mean, heart attack, you either go or you survive. Cancer is the same thing, but with a stroke, you live. Once you live, you're stuck with these disabilities and the debilities. Yeah. And so the depression sets in, the anxiety sets in. Mm. And for her patient's time and ongoing rehab. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's a, it sounds like a cop-out, but yeah. that's what we have to offer. I guess the other thing is, you know, the, the long-term effects. I mean, we've spoken about disabilities and so on. Possibility of a second stroke after yeah, the yeah, first Yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously, no, no, but, uh, but very good question, very good point. People don't realize that, and we see this. We often get someone who's had one and comes with another one. They stop, they don't want to quit smoking. Yeah. They don't take their aspirin. Right. They don't control the blood pressure. Again, it's about it's prevention. It's about prevention. All right, yeah. well, Prof Modi, thank you so much for your time. It's thank really you. been thank insightful. You. All right, um, we're taking a quick break. When we come back, we'll summarize all the important things you need to know about stroke. Stay with us. Welcome back and thank you so much for staying with us. Now, here are those key messages we would like you to take away from today's show. We do know that 90% of strokes can be prevented. If there's anything you should take away from this is that all, almost all strokes can be prevented. And you can prevent this by living a healthy lifestyle. Now, what does healthy lifestyle mean? Well, eat whole foods and stay away from these fast foods. Exercise regularly, maintain a healthy weight, Please quit smoking if you are a smoker and don't start. And of course, reduce stress and alcohol intake. And of course, as you heard, very important to ensure that all these risk factors are well controlled, like high blood pressure, high blood fats, and diabetes. Now, during this pandemic, particularly if you have all these conditions that we mentioned earlier, don't delay your checkup. Please take your medication as prescribed. And if you notice any signs of a stroke, either on yourself or, any, or anyone else, please be fast. Now, what do we mean by be fast? Well, if you notice uh, some balance uh, issue uh, or some blurred vision, uh, if you see something going wrong with the face, one side of the face that's not you know, the same as the other, or one arm is drooping or the speech you know, is getting impaired, 
please act. Time is of the essence. You need to get the person to hospital within four minutes. Call an ambulance as soon as possible. Now, as we heard, stroke can be quite devastating and uh, you know it can be quite a challenge for not only the person that suffers from the stroke, but their family as well. So uh, if you're not doing too well or need some help, please remember the SADAC 24-hour helpline is 0800-456-789. Well, that brings us to the end of our show on stroke today. And thank you so much for watching and uh, for all the questions that came through. Now, remember to continue interacting with us via SMS, WhatsApp, Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, as displayed on your screen right now. And until next time, please be safe and do take care of yourself.